The primary job of the immune system is to defend the body against infections. I think of it as our body's military, and just like the military has branches, Army, Navy, Air Force, so does the immune system. These branches are called the innate immune response and the adaptive immune response. Both the innate and the adaptive immune responses are necessary to protect the body against pathogens. A pathogen is any microorganism that causes disease or pathology. So anytime you are infected with a cold or a virus, it's causing some sort of form of inflammation, pathology in your body that is leading to the symptoms that you are experiencing. If you have deficits in either your innate or your adaptive immune response, there's likely to be trouble. So in a normal healthy individual, the pathogen burden or number of organisms replicating in the patient will climb for a period of time and then as the immune system kicks in and eliminates the pathogen, it will fall back down. Most of us have probably experienced this at some point in our lives when we've come in contact with a cold or a flu, our immune system has kicked in and it eliminated the pathogen and we recovered. Now, if you have a patient that lacks their adaptive immune response, you'll watch the pathogen burden climb just as it would in a normal or immunocompetent patient. But in these immunocompromised patients, instead of turning down when the immune response kicked in, it begins to steadily climb. As the pathogen burden increases, it can become overwhelming, and patients who lack adaptive immune responses often die from opportunistic infections. These are infections that patients with a full immune response have no trouble fighting, but are deadly to those who are immunocompromised in the adaptive compartment. These would be patients with HIV, AIDS, or some genetic mutations that result in what are called primary immunodeficiencies, which we'll cover in a future videos. While this is significant, the most glaring difference actually comes from patients who have deficits in innate immunity. The pathogen burden will very quickly become insurmountable and overwhelming, and the problem here is really that the innate immune system is absolutely essential for not only keeping pathogens out in the first place, but the entirety of the immune response that follows. The innate and the adaptive immune responses work together. And like any good team, each has strengths that cover for the other's weaknesses and vice versa. It's important for you to understand the main differences between the innate and the adaptive immune response and how that contributes to the whole functional immune response. Let's start with the innate immune response. The cells of the innate immune response are macrophages, neutrophils, dendritic cells, mast cells, eosinophils, basophils, and natru natural killer cells. The neutrophils and the macrophage monocyte cells are the ones that we'll talk about the most, particularly the macrophages, as they are typically the first cells in our bodies that actually encounter a pathogen and recognize it for what it is. There are three main characteristics of the innate immune response. First, it's nonspecific. It recognizes structural features that are crucial to the survival of pathogens that we as humans don't have. In this way, it can recognize what might be harmful to us with actu without actually knowing what it is dealing with. Second, and really important, it responds immediately. It begins working right at the initial exposure to the pathogen. It's inborn. We don't need to induce the response. It begins within minutes to hours, working feverishly. Get it? Feverish? Little immunology joke there since... That's one of the mechanisms. Anyway, that sounds pretty good and all, but there is a trade-off for that immediate response. There's no memory. The innate immune response has no ability to remember what it's seen before. This macrophage, this neutrophil, will respond exactly the same way the second, third, or fourth time it sees that exact same pathogen. The adaptive immune response, on the other hand, is highly specific. While the innate really only recognizes the difference between things that are dangerous or not dangerous, kind of a good versus evil judgment, the adaptive immune response recognizes foreign versus self. 
It doesn't make value judgments, just whether or not it is self or not. Anything self is ignored. Anything not self is attacked, destroyed, digested, killed, incinerated. You get the picture. Also different from the innate, the adaptive immune response takes a long time. It needs to be induced after an initial exposure. This is actually called priming, and this can take a long time, days, weeks, even months in some cases. Now, this really highlights the importance of that quick-acting, immediate innate immune response. There are some pathogens that reach that overwhelming pathogen burden really fast. An example of this is Yersinia pestis, the bacteria that caused the bubonic plague, the plague killed a quarter of the population of Europe between 1347 and 1351. Yersinia pestis will overburden and kill a patient in five to seven days, but you won't make an adaptive immune response for 10 to 14 days, which means you will have been dead one week by the time your adaptive immune response shows up to help, which isn't helping anyone. So you really need that immediate innate immune response to get to work fast, priming the adaptive immune response, but also killing off as many of the bacteria as it possibly can, because it's really your only hope at this point. Now, the tremendous advantage of the adaptive immune response is its memory. It's got a memory like an elephant, and it's just what it na its name implies. It's adaptable. So each time it sees the pathogen, it's going to make a better stronger and faster response than it did the first time. And this happens because of the clones of T and B cells, the cells of the adaptive immune response, which will expand rapidly upon encountering the pathogen. This process is known as clonal expansion. After the pathogen is eliminated, many of the T and B cells will probably begin to die off but some of them will actually continue and they will live on somewhat indefinitely. So you may have originally had a cell, a cell pool of about 100 cells that recognized that pathogen before you saw it. And then afterward, you'll have several thousands of them making your body ready for that pathogen so it won't be fooled again. So those are the main differences. Your innate immune response is nonspecific, but it works immediately. Unfortunately, it has no memory, but that's where your adaptive immune response comes in. The adaptive immune response is highly specific, um, but it does take time, 10 days or so, to actually make a good adaptive immune response. But once it makes it, you'll never forget.